All right, you're tuning into the Way Different Show. Right now, I got my a co-guest right here, Niji. And I got our main man, Remy. How you doing, Remy? Man, I'm doing great. Appreciate you guys having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Niji, it's been a long time. It's I nice know, to see you. You look has. very lovely right now. I appreciate it. I've been working hard all day. Your, your nails look on fleek. Oh, you know, we trying, we trying, we trying. <laughs> you like me? <laughs> I see you got your son on it. What is it? It says son? No, nah, it says love. It's a rock, you know. One day I'll be married. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <clears throat> what? No comment? No comment. Whatever. I'm the, you know, it, it, love is for everybody. That's right. You don't believe that? You believe that, right? Remy? Absolutely. I'm love is for everybody. Yeah, that's why I love the game. <laughs> the art of money. I love the game. I love the game. Oh my god. I'm married to the game. I hear you. So if you don't tune in, we got the the greatest trainer of all time. The greatest specialist of all time, the greatest coach of all time, Mr. Remy. Mr. Remy, what's your full name? Stan Remy. Stan Remy. So yep. you want you want to go by Remy? Remy. Right. Everyone calls Glad you respect. That. I like that. Yep. So Remy, I just want to know how did you get your big break? Uh, okay. Well, just you know a little background. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I played basketball on all levels. Um, you still know how to play basketball? A little bit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know more because you want to you wanna avoid any kind of injuries and stuff because everybody depends on me. So, Facts. Um, I consider myself an average basketball player in high school until I met my, my best friend, Keon Doolin, mm -hmm. who was an ex-Miami Heat player, played in the NBA for 13 years. Um, he showed us how to work on their game, on our game. And that's the first time that I've ever done that, you know, working on handles, shooting, you know, different scenarios. All we did, you know, coming from where I'm from is just play. We we mm. go play against older people, grown men, you know, so you, you learn the toughness, the competitiveness, but you don't know, you don't learn the skill aspect of mm. it. So meeting him and training all summer, I went from an average to a really good basketball player and was able to get free education out of it in college. Um, and I felt like it was a secret in the hood. And to everybody, I felt like it was a secret. I felt why, like why kids. You, why you say it felt like a secret? Because where we're from, nobody was working on their game. So I was like, if I can inspire the youth and inspire people to teach them, like, hey, listen, if you do this, you can get better. It gives you a better chance of getting a free education and getting out of your bad situations that you're in. So, so growing up in that community, yep. it wasn't. It was no type of news alert that hey, if you got a good game, you could possibly leave here. On a full ride, that's what you're saying? Well, of course, but the the how to, to get that full ride is what the, the question mark was. Like, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. And nobody was working on their game. See, I grew up in Miami Gardens, and I grew up in Cooper City later on, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I'm speaking on more on the Miami Gardens side. Triple C's. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. um, Carroll City, I should say, you know. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, growing up in that area, um, those kids didn't know. We did not know. We literally just played against older folks. So when I figured out that I can get that much better in that short amount of time, I wanted to spread that. That's what made me, motivated me to want to become a trainer. I think Definitely. that's so awesome, though, if I could just interject. Yeah. You know, most most youth, they, you know, they aspire, I want to be a basketball player, I want to be a basketball mm. player. But you're saying I want to be more than a basketball player. I want sure. to be a coach at such a young age. How old were you when you when that? Decided that? Yeah. 17. You were 17, 17 years old, 17, so you 17. still were in your prime. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. So it's funny, and when I went to college, I went to a Division two in South Carolina called Morris College, mm -hmm. and um, I was training my own teammates. Are you serious? It's crazy. Like, really? I, I wait, was, wait, you have brothers and sisters? Yes. You're the youngest? I'm the youngest. You're the youngest, yes, and you I'm came the <laughs> Yes, I'm the youngest, yep. And I, you'll, you'll see that, that kind of uh, trait with the oldest. Yeah, so how sure. old, how old were you when you were teaching your teammates? 18, wow. telling them, hey, listen, they knew what type of baggage I came with. Wow. Coming in, they like, this guy was friends with Udonis Haslam, James Jones, Malik Allen, you know, Keon Doolin, you know, coming there and being recruited. Um, they know these guys were my friends, so they kind of listened. I was always a leader, no matter what it was as a kid. I was never a follower. People were always looking at me to say, what is he going to do and follow? So I always wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing because I knew it was always a try. What gave you the confidence, though, to say that I'm going to be a leader, you know, especially at such a young age, you know, was that instilled in you from your parents? Absolutely. Or, um, you know? Being Haitian, um, 
you know, we were very strict about how we grew up. Mm. Um, a lot of morals, a lot of different things and, you know, qualities that we bring as a culture. So my father was always a leader. And just watching him every day wake up, suit and tie, go to work, mm -hmm. never late, um, not staying out late, discipline, working with us. I was like, I want to be like that when I grow up. I don't know whatever he's doing because he's going out, leaving his house. I know I, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to grow up and be that disciplined and wear a suit and tie and go to work every single day. So that's what brought the leadership because I was already in my mind knowing, hey, I want to be like this. Did you see at such a young age though that you would, you would achieve so many heights? Um, no, because I mean, obviously the goal was to make it to the NBA. That's yeah. everyone's goal starting off. Hey, I want to make it to the NBA. So, you know, it's tough seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel with that goal and that dream because that dream is very fastidious. I speak at a lot of camps and it's it's a dream that is like not a real a real reality. Yeah. So, you know, it's a lot of kids. You got to think it's different states and different countries now yeah. that we're competing with, yeah. you know. So um, it's a lot of jobs that were available back in the day. Now they're not because of the overseas market coming over. And oh, wow. it's so many European players in the NBA. So they're taking jobs from us Americans. Oh, wow. So at the end of the day, um, that dream is very unreal. So the guys that do make it, it's like it's a miracle. What are you telling them then? You, you said you speak on, on, you know, at different camps or different places. Yep. What are you telling these young kids that are aspiring to be a basketball well, player? And you know. The f to keep them hopeful. The, well, you, you're always hopeful. When one person makes it, you can do the same. Yeah. Um, it, you, you're always hopeful of that when you see somebody doing it. Um, obviously, the chances are slim, but it's a formula. It's a formula that, um, you know, gives you a better chance. It's not like it, it still takes a lot of luck. That's what people don't realize um, to making it being injury-free. You can be very good for 10 years, 12 years straight. That one injury, now it's over with that quickly. Um, one instance where you're, you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time, over it that quickly. You know, hanging around with the wrong crowd, over it that quickly. So um, a lot of luck has to happen. Um, a lot of discipline has to happen. And um, like I tell these kids, you know, when I speak to them, it's a formula, working as hard as you can on and off the court. Because off, if you're not working off the court, you're not going to be able to be on the court. So that's from getting good grades, studying, getting good, uh, you know, having great study habits. Those things matter. You know, those things matter majorly, and I make sure I, I spread that word to those What kids. are some deal breakers for you when you're working with athletes? Things that you just, you know what, I can't do or you'll deal with it. I mean, you've learned, I've learned to deal with everything. I think my patience level is, is all-time high. I think that's a major quality of mine, being so patient. Um, being so understanding, understanding that everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different personality. You can't, I don't teach the game the same way to everybody because everybody's not receptive to information the same way. Mm -hmm. So it's important for me to understand you, know who you are as a person, understand your past in order to, in order to teach you. So um, I think that's, those are important. That was gonna be my question too, because you know, my son, he has um, ADHD and he plays football. So, you know, the way the coaches would teach the other boys, you know, it's a little different. You know, For sure. you know what Absolutely. I mean? So that was my question. You know. So at the end of the day, he has Smart ADHD, kid, but, but guess what? He can learn. Yeah, he definitely you got, And you have to figure out how to teach him so right. that you, whatever message you want to come across, you have to figure out how he learns so that he can be receptive to your information, whatever you want to tell him, because you have a lot of players on a football team, you have about 15 players on a basketball team. Mm. All 15 of those guys think differently. I know, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Like, how do all you deal with all these characters, though? And, and I think that's where, you know, at the professional level, you know, a lot of guys and coaches get in trouble. I think some of the best coaches in the world, Phil Jackson, Pat Riley, those guys are amazing at managing personalities. Yeah. It might not even be X's and O's, because at the end of the day, you have great players, they're gonna do great things. But managing personality, making players understand whatever their role is, you got to love your role because at the end of the day, everybody wants to be a star player, but you can't. So if you're a coach that can tell somebody that had aspirations of being a star player to say, hey, listen, this is your role. I just want you to rebound. But in your mind, you got your friends, you got your family that's like, we want you to score points. That's the fun part of the game. But great coaches know how to say, hey, 
we're, you have to be great at this job. This is the job that you need to do for us to be successful. It's all about us. It's Collect never it's, it's never one person. You can't do it by yourself. So this is what you're great at. Be great at it, and it's going to help us as a whole. Awesome. And, and when you talk about team, how many team members do you have to make you great or what you do great? Um, I have, I have, a, I have, I mean, the most important person in my life, which is God. I mean, he keeps me, Ooh. he keeps me, uh, on, you know, guys. level headed and he keeps me strong. He keeps me patient, like I said. And then, you know, obviously I have the physical team around me. Um, my manager is in the back there, Austin. Um, he's like everything for me. Um, I feel like if he crashes, it's over for me. You know what I mean? I have to go back to God and pray that <laughs> everything, you know, works stick. out. But like, he's everything yeah. for me. Um, my family, my support system, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my wife, my kids. Um, I have two kids, two boys, two young boys. All of these, all of these, all of these aspects are the reason why I, I stay level-headed and, and, and passionate. I like to mention the, those people because it's very important, especially when you're in such a, a position that um, can cause a lot of strain. It can cause a lot of. Okay. Um, wait, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Nah, it can be a lot for you. So I think sometimes those people need that recognition to know that, you know, you, just like how you just told me, man, if he breaks down, like, I'm going back to God. Like, that's how important you are to me. That's how you how important you are to the team that you have built, you know? You know, being on the Wade show, um, I think, you know, obviously you guys know I trained Dwayne Wade. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he said something to me that was that stuck home. I remember he was like, man, you know, throughout this business when you're in no matter if it's my business or it's in his business as a basketball player you get so successful and it happens very very fast yeah. and sometimes you forget to just thank the people that's why you know, around you like trust me. and he's like he's and it like, may not be intentional exactly like he's like stan i didn't ask you how your family was doing yeah. how your kids are doing i'm just saying get on the plane come make me better sacrifice and sometimes you just forget to say hey how was your family doing um, is it? A, are you able to come? Like sometimes you just forget because you're in the moment. And he, and the fact that he pointed that out, I was like, you're a different type of superstar. What you say? You are a different type of superstar. The fact that you can even think about that—that's the last thing. Because at the end of the day, you're giving orders. You you expect your team to perform at a high mm -hmm. level because that helps you perform at a high level. And if they're sick, it doesn't matter because you got to be great at the end of the day to the people's eye. What do you do to prepare as a coach? Ooh, a lot of research. Because I know you okay. Because I was like, I know you said you can't play because you don't want to get hurt. Yeah, yeah, nah, you know. So well, playing my playing days are over. So, oh. um, <laughs> oh, my right. yeah, my playing days are super over. But um, I see some men out there trying to, say, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I I do a lot of research, like you said. When I tell you, you know, understanding people. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm when I'm with guys, I love to go out to dinner with them, just to listen oh, to good. them, talk to them. Yeah. We go out, we have a good time because I'm able to just see a lot from that. Um, it was a major moment in my life that in, that enabled me to understand how to read people mm. um, and how to read myself. Teach I was able, me. I'm I was, listening. I was able to read myself mm. um, through the life of the NBA. You guys know there's a lot of partying. There's a lot yeah. of fun. And I'll never forget it. You know, I was in an Orlando nightclub with the Orlando Magic um, with my best friend, Keon Doolin. There were bottles everywhere. It was just fun everywhere. And... You can easily get caught up in that life. I call it a professional homeboy. Yeah. You see those guys that are yes. around that just with no purpose. Yes, you can easily get caught in that life and mm. you know and just forget for about yourself at the end of the day. And I remember me sitting there and the bottles coming out and you anybody else would be having a great time. I was like, this ain't my money. Mm. This ain't my life. I gotta go find what I need to go do. My passion. How old were you when you when that came? That was you? like maybe 16 17 man cut yeah. it out man yeah. come yeah, on yeah absolutely you, you're you're talking about, you know, cut, man, absolutely cut so it out. i was able i really? was uh, yeah absolutely i was able to oh, that's dope. i was able to just say you know what i got to go find out my passion i got to go make sure you know what i want to do in life i got to focus on it and make sure it happens because i don't want to get caught up in this life this life will say hey you don't want to go to college yeah, I'll just hang around you all day. No, no yeah, college, yeah. no family, no nothing. Absolutely, you're, you're, you know, you're my, you're my everything. Absolutely, I so call you to travel. Let's go, the, party. The, let's go. Yeah, the fact that I was able to learn that about myself, mm -hmm. in my mind, I was like, I want to go find out and learn about other people that way. Do other people know this about themselves? You know, I want to help them understand. Hey, I can help you reach your goals. Do Are they you receptive know? though? Help when you, somebody, some, you're getting somebody to read themselves, you well, know, to dig some, deep. You know, some. some 
they they become receptive when they see you doing the research. When they mm -hmm. see you putting the time in, they're like, no one's ever asked me this before. Mm -hmm. No one's ever even Amazing. cared. Yeah. Wow. No one's even ever cared to ask me these questions. So the fact that you're doing it, I know you're doing your research. And that's another thing D-Wade loved about me. Um, when he first got with me, it was later on in his career. And he was like, I can tell you are doing your research about me because, you know, you knew how to teach me because anybody could come in here and just say, hey, oh my God, I'm about to have D-Wade. I'm gonna, give him, I'm gonna yeah. give him everything I got. Every bet, no, nah, I did my research. I know, I know the areas he was dipping in. I know the areas I wanted to, you know, continue to get better at. I, I knew the areas that we needed to get better at to stay competitive with age. And he knew that and he just, we, we, we stuck together like glue right away because he knew like, okay, this guy is really doing his research. He didn't just come in here and say, okay. I'm gonna just come in and train like anyone else. So. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna take a like oh, quick no, commercial no break. No we going. got we got we got Dwayne Wayne Senior on the line. He wanna butt in and yes. you know have a couple words with you. For sure. So you know everybody, if you just now tuning in, we got the greatest you know trainer, greatest specialist, greatest coach of all time coming from Dade County, Miami Gardens, yeah. Triple C. You already know, Mr. Remy. Yes, Another episode of Way Different. This is live from the dojo. We got Z-Man in the building. <laughs> we got Southern Bravo in the building. And you know you got me. The band is six From the moment Mari enter. What's on me agenda? Find a shorty like she don't read. And I bring her to my center. Rose and margaritas moving straight up out the blender. Chanel number five. Is it lingers? I remember what's your name? What's your sign? Then you know you fine. Baby, you that ass. Girl, I gotta make you mine. Daydreaming while I'm driving. How you looking from behind? If you feel the way I'm feeling, why the we wasting time? I deliver, make you. We all have dreams. So, I mean, I know people say, I mean, they probably think I'm used to it, you know what I'm saying, by now, but it's still a dream being in NBA, you know, I still play 2K with those guys, so. Which is why we end up as strong as though, let's be clear. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Hey. Do you like the gear? Do you like the gear right? Do you like to get it on in the middle of the night? If you feel the way I'm feeling, if you gon' be all right, I say green light at the green light, stop.